Hello, and welcome to Elms Learning Network. You might be asking, why am I here? What is Elms Learning Network? Well, to know where we're going to take you, we need to know where we've been. So let's look at the LMS of today. And by today, I mean the last 20 years. Really, learning management technologies haven't changed that much in several decades. Why? Because LMSs are doing too much. And when you have anything doing too much in one location, people aren't going to be satisfied with it because it's too many things to too many people. Quickly reviewing, when you build and buy a single solution, let alone an LMS, it might be easier to promote and you might have one person to pay at the end of the month. You might have uniformity. You could have all kind of cool integrations, but you still lack the basic control to do anything innovative with that platform. You're paying a lot of money and you've got long contracts. Also, your direction and innovative course are set by a third-party vendor, and you can also get into entangling vendor relationships via LTI. So what we have here isn't a technical problem, it's a social problem. We have too many people coalesced around a singular solution. Colleges, universities, K-12, in educational institutions are large with lots of bureaucratic levels. So we need to more closely mirror those levels in our implementation of technology if people are to ever be happy with it. When we implement things doing too much, people are going to be upset about them. So that's where we were. Where are we trying to take everyone? So what is Elms Learning Network? Elms Learning Network is an idea that you have an idea at a new domain and you connect everything together to form a course experience. You've got a series of what are known as services and authority systems bridging that experience. For example, if you've ever used Google, having YouTube embedded into Google+, these are two separate systems, but yet they plug together nicely. You know where you are and you know what to expect. We try and take that approach and bring it to educational technology development. So this is a more network-driven approach. And when you have a more network-driven approach to delivery of educational experiences, you can start to have more people coalesce around more systems. This can lead to better experiences by using what's known as a middleware approach. Middleware approach is that you have a system that pushes people out to where they intend to go, kind of like Google and logging into everything. For example, if you have an online art studio course, you might have a really great blog, studio, content area, and media system delivering that experience. But not every course that's going to be taught at your institution needs these solutions, or maybe they need different flavors of these solutions. So we could have a US history course that's very content and media heavy. We could also have a next generation physics course that's using all kinds of systems, some of which don't even exist yet, all because of the design methodology we're using. This is an example of a medical training provider that uses Elms Learning Network and the way they communicate their solution. By plugging in all these new tools, they can progressively enhance their ecosystem and improve the experience for students in a more rapid manner. So effectively, each course is a network of systems and solutions. These course networks support industry standards, such as API-driven design, LTI, Experience API, or Tin Can, depending on what you call it, and RESTful architecture. So everything is queryable from robots. This isn't a new idea though, and I've kind of given tips my hat as to who we took the idea from. You use networks of systems and solutions every day if you've used Google, Apple, or Microsoft products. You note that there's a top branding bar. I know who I'm, what application provider I'm using. I might know what application I'm using in that provider, such as YouTube. I know who I am and that I'm still logged in. And I know generally how to get to all the other applications. Similarly, Microsoft is also doing a great job at this. Notice color, top branding bar, iconography to suggest where I am, always knowing who I am based on my profile being visible. So we've taken this approach and extended it into learning management system design to form its ecosystem. You see we have a network button, we have an admin profile in this case, as I'm logged in as admin here, and we've got our course interface. The color is suggesting where we are right now. We're in our content outline system. 
By expanding network, you can see we have a myriad of other solutions and applications at our disposal. We could also click our profile and see who we are, get more settings specific to us and our experience in the network. Because we've taken a network-based approach to systems design, we can also deliver different types of interactions more effectively. Uh, for example, this course about the wild free north uh, Alaska has this cool image gallery in it. This image gallery, while presented to students as if it is in this content, actually lives in a different system. It lives in our media solution. Everything is able to be embedded everywhere via share widgets, which you can always call out from the right sidebar. This is another overview page of our media solution. So you can have a system dedicated to asset management live side by side with a system dedicated to course content management. Both know how to talk to each other seamlessly and both from a, a faculty and staff perspective are easy enough to get to. They're familiar once you've started using the network and using any tool in the network because all of them are designed the same way. So for example, we have our open studio tool. This is an area where students can collaborate with one another, they can share feedback and critique each other. You can see we still have the same type of color banding, we have the same type of usability patterns, we've even got our submission cards that are similar to the cards we had in our media system. We've also got a lot of emphasis on accessibility in system design. So Elms Learning Network is an extremely accessible system. We've also got lots of cool next generation types of things that allow you to simulate different accessibility issues your users might have, optimize fonts for them, and use keyboard and voice-based navigation systems. So advanced solutions are really just built from simple patterns. And because we're following a simple pattern, this means it's something we can automate, it's something we can easily communicate to others. It's a growing ecosystem of solutions that's ever expanding. So why don't you jump on and find out more? Go through tabs in our interface, get into our documentation, figure out how to install it and watch more videos. We look forward to having you join the community soon.